I'm your airport manager, and I bet you a, a lot of you are thinking, what is that? What does she do? Well, I'll tell you what. I don't fly the airplanes. I'm not an air traffic controller. I don't meet you at the ticket counter and check you in, and I don't throw your bags on the airplane. What I do is run this facility so it works for all of those people that are doing all those things that I don't do. As a matter of fact, uh, I work for the government. I work for Chemung County, and yes, I'm a bureaucrat. <laughs> but I like to think of my job as something a little bit more. I like to think of myself as a government entrepreneur. And what that means is I look for ways to do more than just manage a public facility, but I look for ways to connect with the people who are using the facility. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, one way that I know we connect, the easy way, is we are the front door to the tourism opportunities in this region. So people come to the, the southern tier, the Finger Lakes region for a variety of uh, opportunities. And so when I first got here, I was looking for, well, how can we show what we have in this region at the welcome mat here, when people first get here? So right away, I started talking to the museums, of course, the Corning Museum of Glass and uh, the Rockwell Museum of Western Art, and we started brainstorming, well, how can we bring the museum experience to the airport? Okay, sorry about that. You may have seen this. Um, it took us a little while to put it together, but we actually put up some museum quality display cases with art from the museums. And these are right in, once you get off the airplane and on your way to the baggage claim area, um, you can really see and experience those. They were so beautiful and got such a good uh, uh, reply from the people using the airport that we added another one just recently which is from the Seneca Lake Wine Trail so that we're adding not just the museums but also the winery um, experience too. Um, so once we had this going, then uh, one of our other tourist destinations came to me, and it was kind of funny because they were a little bit uh, shy about asking me uh, if they could put some special decorations on our bag belt. But when Watkins Glen International said, how about if we decorate up the, the baggage carousel so it looks like the famous S-curves at Watkins Glen International, I thought, that's a great idea. And so look at that now. It gets changed out every year, so in addition to looking like a racetrack, it's got the, the dates and the website and stuff like that. Um, and as a matter of fact, sometimes they actually put decals of race cars on the belt so that when the bags are going around, the cars are going around the track as well. Um, I did ask him one time if the, if the uh, NASCARs have to go in a different direction than the, the Indy cars, but I guess that's too technical. <clears throat> Aside from the tourist opportunities then, we also look for ways to make that human personal connection with the people that are using the facility. And some of those are very simple ways, uh, like for example, when you call the airport, just the regular phone number, I apologize for this up front, but you do get one of those very annoying phone trees, you know, where it says push one for airline information, push two for car rental information. I haven't found a way around that. However, what I have found is I've recorded that in my own voice. Some people recognize that that's my voice, some people don't, but what they do recognize is that it's a real person, it's not a computer, it's not one of those recordings that you just buy at the phone store, and people really, really uh, click to that just human element of a very non-human process. Similarly, uh, we are required to have a variety of recordings on the PA system, and you all know what those are. Don't leave your bags unattended, don't park on the front curb, but the same thing. We've made those recordings in voices of people that actually work at the airport, and we've got a variety of them, so people can recognize that this is my friend, this is my neighbor, this is a real person that's telling me how to use this facility. But sometimes we do a little bit bigger things than that to connect with people. One thing that I like to do as the manager of the facility is just walk through and see how people are experiencing the airport. Try and see what's working, what's not working, what changes we can make. And there was one time I did that, and there was an elderly couple sitting near the screening checkpoint area, and it was obvious that they were filled with anxiety, that they weren't comfortable 
And so I approached them and I introduced myself and I said, can I help you? And they said, yes, thank you so much. We don't fly very often and we're on this trip and we don't know how to go through security. Can you help us? So I said, sure, yeah, that's easy. So, you know, started with the easy things. You got to take your shoes off, take your belt off. And then I said, and how about your carry-on bag? Do you have your 311 bag packed? And they said, 311? So then I knew, okay, we've got some work that we need to do here. Now, I'm hoping that you all know that 311 bag is the little one-quart baggie that you have to put all of your small bottles of liquids, gels, and aerosols in when you go through the screening checkpoint. These people weren't aware of that, and so as we started talking about it, I finally said, listen, let's just open up your carry-on bag and take a look at it. Well, oh my gosh, I'm here to tell you, their carry-on bag looked like a... Uh, uh, salesman reps case for economy size shampoos. They, it was all the way full with big, big bottles of all the no-no stuff. So um, as we talked about it, they, they were getting more and more uncomfortable because they didn't know what they were gonna do. And I said, don't worry about it, it's okay. I went and got a shopping bag and I said, here, let's take all this stuff and just put it in this bag. And then when you get to your destination, my recommendation is the first stop you make is the drugstore and pick up little bottles of all of the stuff that you need. When you come back, we'll have these, you know, economy-sized bottles of things for you. Um, turns out that when they got back, their flight was significantly delayed, and even so, we had somebody there waiting for them as soon as they came through security with their bag. These people were so happy. They're not frequent travelers. They may not fly through the airport again in their lifetime. However, we took a situation where they were flying for another p purpose, and, but they were uncomfortable and they had some concerns. And we just erased those concerns and let them focus on the reason for their travel. You're all smart people here. And I know that there are times when you're in situations where you're not comprehending the situation, your mind's on something else, it's a place where you don't go all the time. I know what happens to me, maybe at the IRS office, at the doctor's office, the subway station, at the airport. How many times have you just wanted somebody to recognize that you are? That's what we're talking about, that's what we try to do. Beyond that then, um, we also look for ways to manage the actual physical facility so that it works for people. Uh, one way that we do that is, or that we have done recently, is with a major upgrade to the bathrooms. And if any of you have been there, I'm sure that you've seen the new bathrooms. I'm very proud of them. Um, but we took a lot of effort to make sure that we thought of the little touches to make sure and get everything in there. For example, we made sure that we put baby changing states, uh, tables in the men's room as well as the ladies' rooms. Uh, we made sure to add a, a family care room so that in addition to the regular restroom, we had a place where people uh, in wheelchair or with small children or with special needs had a place that they could go. One of the uh, amenities that we added to the family care room was a step stool so that little children could reach the sink. Not too long after we put that in, I got an email, and it was actually kind of a nasty email from a traveler who said, um, I was traveling with a member of my family who's a little person, and they were not able to reach the sink in the bathroom. How shame on you for not considering that. And I thought, ah. Well, I thought we had thought of everything. We put so much effort into to not missing anything. But you know what? After an email like that, it was really easy to buy some more stools, put those in all the restrooms, and now we're meeting another need that, that we hadn't thought about it in advance. It's taken care of now. Another similar situation, looking for a way to make a facility that works for people, just looking through storage, uh, I ran across some overstuffed chairs that we had, pretty new, very good condition, just sitting there, and I thought, wow, we need a place where families can hang out, not the typical airport seating where business people sit and plug in your laptop, but a place where families with, again, older people or children can just hang out. 
So here we've, uh, we put together what I call our living room, which is actually not so different from the seats up there in the corner. Uh, we've got the overstuffed chairs. It's an, in an area where there's a television set. Uh, we put some tables there too. It's a big space where little kids can run around um, that was otherwise not utilized. And so this is a place now where people can actually uh, be comfortable and use the facility. In, in addition to then just the, the physical facility, um, we do like to open the airport up to the community for other just special things when it seems like it makes sense. For example, tours. And of course, we do school tours and uh, bring rotary clubs and stuff like that to see the airport. Um, but from time to time, we do special tours for a special purpose. For example, I've had um, people with a fear of flying that just want to come and spend some private time at the airport so that they can go through the process in a quiet way before, again, they're, you're all thinking of your destination and what you're doing. Another thing that we've done along those same lines is work with parents of uh, children with autism and bring them in, let them go through the airline process, the security process, and all of that at their own pace, ask questions and get familiar with it before the actual big day comes. And then finally, uh, and this, um, I hope that you'll forgive me because it might seem a little bit greedy, but I recognize that the airport has a special thing that we can offer to our community, which is, I have a captured audience of people with disposable income. So I always like to make sure that we have a local charity that we adopt. I like to work with charities that cover uh, a multi-county region because that's the same region that the airport serves. So in the past, we've partnered with the Glove House, which provides services to troubled youth. And currently, we're working with the Food Bank of the Finger of sorry, Food Bank of the Southern Tier, um, and especially during the holiday season, we just find ways to, uh, to ask for donations from these people that are traveling through that have a little bit extra to, to share. So that's some of what we do to make the airport really connect with the community and to make it more than just a government facility that provides this aviation opportunity, but really, really serve the people who use it. And I think that's what government is all about. Don't you? Thank you.